I thought I'd make a video about um, setting up a bore gauge and boring a hole here and how I go about doing it. Because every time I show this kind of, these kind of um, measuring instruments in a video, I get questions in the comments. And so I thought I'd go over it here and, and uh, show you what I do. There are different ways to do this, but this is what I do. And it might be of some help to somebody. So this is the section of the part that we're working on here in the machine. And we have to bore this hole, which has got this uh, dimension, 980 thousandths, plus or minus one thousandths. And for this close to tolerance, I like to use a, and it's kind of down in a slot here, you'll see on the real part. And I, I like to use a dial bore gauge to um, adjust my boring head till I get out to my dimension. But first you've got to set up the gauge. So I'll show how I go about doing this. So I think first we'd have to set up a, a stack of gauge blocks, a standard to set the gauge to. Now this gauge was already set up when I previously ran the part before this, but I'm going to redo it just so I, show, I can show how I do it here. It's already actually set to this dimension, but I'm going to show you how to, how to do it again. So here's my, um, here's my set of, uh, gauge blocks and um, end pieces that I use to set up a gauge like this. And this is just a standard 81-piece um, set gauge block set. I, I like to use the square gauge blocks because I'll show you here this clamping end pieces onto it. It's a little bit um, easier to do, I think, than a rectangular set. But a rectangular set can be done, used the same way. You just need a different kind of clamping device or you can clamp it between some um, parallel machinist clamps. You can clamp the blocks between that with some end pieces. And you can do the same thing as I'm doing here, but this is just a little bit nicer. I, and so this is the way I do it. And a gauge block set, if you don't know this already, there isn't, um, you have to kind of put these together to get certain dimensions because there's, there's a 50 thousandths gauge block that comes in, the, in this 81 piece set and then you go every tenth of a thousandth, so this is one hundred and one tenth of a thousandth to one hundred and, and nine tenths of a thousandth in these nine blocks here. And then it starts at one hundred and one thousandths, or actually one hundred thousandths, excuse me, and it goes up to a hundred and fifty thousandths. And then you have blocks every fifty thousandth step all the way up to one inch. And then you have a two inch, three inch, and a four inch block. And with this combination of blocks, you can pretty much set up any kind of dimension you want, but you have to do it in a certain way, which I'll show you here actually. This, this one is a good example, I guess. 980 thousandths. Well, ideally, you would want to take the 900 thousandths gauge block which is this one, and then you would need an 80 thousandths gauge block and you have 980. But that won't really work because you don't have an 80 thousandths gauge block to set that up. So you got to step down 50 thousandths. And if you subtract um, 850 from 980, you're going to come out with 130 thousandths. So you can take this 130 thousandths gauge block and you can ring those two together like this. And now you have, you should have 980 thousandths. Let me, let me check that with the mic. It's always good to double check yourself here. And indeed, that's um, 980 thousandths. So those are the two gauge blocks that I need in this case. But if you were setting up different dimension, of course, you'd use, you could stack up more than just two of these. You could stack three, four, five of them together because the tolerance on these gauge blocks is so close, closely held that you can put a many of them together and you're not going to go out of the thousandth of an inch tolerance that I need for this. Now if you were dealing with um, much closer tolerances you would have to be concerned a little bit about that but usually it's not enough to error to worry about is has been my experience. This is a by the way this is a this is a kind of an inexpensive set of gauge blocks I think this said new line on here. 
I, I, I'm almost positive these were made in like China or something. I bought this, I bought these like uh, 20, 25 years ago, I bought this set and I've used it and it's a class B set of gauge blocks, which out in the shop is perfectly adequate, class B. You can get these all the way up to double A quality and, and um, a set like that would cost you probably two or 3,000. You can get ceramic ones and carbide ones, but for out in the shop, this is plenty adequate and it's plenty accurate enough to be using out in the shop, which is what I use these for. For maybe for in the inspection, you'd want to, you know, you're really your reference standard, you'd want a, a much more precise set. And um, also, this one isn't actually calibrated anymore, so it, like the sticker says, is for your reference only. But even a class B set is pretty darn accurate and you're not going to be have a problem unless you're dealing with millionths of an inch or something like that. So that's my set of gauge blocks that I use out here. And then the... Well, let me show you the part number of this because every time I show this set I get a question about it. And these are the numbers on it. It's a Mitotoyo set, and this is just these uh, end, end blocks and clamping devices for square gauge blocks that have, that have the hole through the middle of them like this. And this is that set, and, and I need... Now, in order to set this dial bore gauge, I'm going to need two end pieces, which I can select these two. And these are precision lap pieces like gauge blocks, so they can ring together. You could... Um, set up a lot of different things with this little set. This is kind of an expensive set, but I've had it for a long time and, and I've used it many times. The, the, it comes with a little scribe thing. If you were, you could, you could set this base up and you could use it on a surface plate to do layout work, although I've never done that anything that way. And this is kind of a point you can go into a hole with. I'm not sure, I've never used this for that either. And then these end pieces have different kinds of profiles. And this is very precise to um, a quarter of an inch, in this case, on this radius from this face. And this, these end pieces are half an inch thick. So if you're setting an outside gauge, you can um, depend on this being exactly a half an inch thick or very close to it, like as, as close as a gauge block is. And so these are quarter inch with a radius. If you're doing some kind of outside measurement, you could use that. If you're doing a, you needed a smaller radius, this one here, which is a 125 thousandths of an inch on that radius. And this is all very precisely lapped and close tolerance. So you can depend on, the, on those dimensions. And that's probably why this set is so expensive because of that. But Anyway, I, I mostly use it to do these kind of things. So if I ring together this end piece and this one, now I have a, a set of gauge blocks stacked up where I know the dimension quite precisely here. But, I, but if I just put this dial bore gauge in there, it's going to pop those apart with the spring pressure, so I need to clamp it together with something. So I got to pick some clamping elements here, a little screw, flat edge screw and this spacer. Stick that through the middle and I'm going to use this uh, knurled um, screw here and just tighten it up here. Like that. And I'm going to actually take a screwdriver and I'm going to snug this up a little bit tighter even. So I know that those aren't going to spread apart any. So that's the that's our um, reference gauge, and now we're going to set up the gauge itself. So the way I do this is this this set. I've had many sets of these, and I've kind of mixed this, the parts together, and so it's kind of um, like I've got all these different shims and everything. So. Some of these aren't in exactly the same sets of parts, but it, but it doesn't matter. I can show you what, what normally happens. A normal set of, um, I'm going to actually take this gauge apart. 
So we, uh, we start from the beginning. Put the spacer, the little spacer thing and the anvil over here in, the, in where it's supposed to go in the set. This, this gauge did come in this set with this dial indicator and there was a, two other gauges, but I buy extra ones. I can see in these drawer here and I, and I buy extra dial indicators so I can set up multiple gauges and leave them set up for various things I'm doing. But normally this comes with three gauges and one dial indicator. So it's kind of inconvenient. You gotta swap it around if you want it, set up different gauges. So I, like I said, buy extra indicators. But you can set everything from 0.7 all the way up to six inches with this spacer, with this set normally. I don't know what the number of this set is. Let's see what it says on here. This is a Mitutoya set 511-9112. This particular set is from uh, 0.7 to 6 inches. But the reason I'm, I'm even showing you this right now is because if you go to the chart, all of these come with a little, ch little um, chart that gives you the measuring ranges and um, what anvils and what shims you would select out of the set to get to where you want. So our, our dimension was 980 thousandths. So we're using this, this um, gauge, which is the 0.7 to 1.4, like the chart shows here. I don't know if you can see that very well on the video, but we're going to look for a range, which is actually between 0.960 to one inch is our, our um, bore falls in that range. And so we need the 0.9 um, anvil and we need the 80,000 shim for it. So if we go back to our set here, let's see if I can get this closer to the camera so you can kind of see. And we're going to select this anvil and then this 80 thousandths shim washer to go underneath it. So we select that one and the, and the shim washer, if I can get this out of here, and we stick it on, ooh, almost lost it. We stick it on the um, little anvil and then we screw this thing on the gauge right here like that and snug it up with the wrench. So that's our gauge roughly set with the, with the elements we want. Now we got to set the zero point. And I'm just going to loosen this and, uh, and just undo it so we start from the beginning here. Now you can see that this is just a regular dial indicator. You could put any indicator in here that would fit and has the travel range you want. Uh, I don't see any reason not to use a tenth of a thousandth or whatever the millimeter equivalent of that would be as far as resolution. Why, why would you use anything with a coarser resolution? You could, but there's really no point with the dial bore gauge. But anyway, so you stick the indicator in here and you just want to snug this up just enough so that it has some drag to it. So it's not going to move when you make your course adjustment here. You're going to stick the your gauge in the blocks and kind of hold it as best you can sort of where where you think it might, you know, where the zero, you know, just feel it in here. This is just a course adjustment. You're going to push this down until you get to a spot where you think you want to set your zero. Now I'm going to clamp it there. I like to set my zero to where the small needle on this particular indicator is at the first division. And my uh, zero is going to be straight up like that as best. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight with the needle, but I like to have my zero with this small needle on the first division. That way, if I do that consistently with all my dial bore gauges, I don't get mixed up and, and be a revolution off with this um, larger needle. So when I get that approximately where I want it 
this way with a course adjustment. Then, then I'm going to rock the gauge. Let's see if I can see the, if you can see this. I'm going to rock the gauge back and forth this way to my minimum reading, and then I'm going to tip it back and forth this way to my minimum reading. And you kind of got to do all those together. So you go back and forth this way and back and forth this way until you get to the minimum. And I, I got kind of lucky, and I was pretty close to my zero. But if you aren't, you're going to have to uh, turn the bezel here until you're at zero. So what I'm doing is I'm twisting it right now and back and forth and twisting it. I'm trying to get the absolute minimum reading between those that's the stack of gauge blocks here. And this is the way you can set a dial bore gauge that you're going to measure a round diameter because I've had this question in the comments before. Unless, unless you have, happen to have a ring gauge, you know, like something like this, that was the actual size, you could set it to that, but normally you don't have that for oddball sizes, and you got to do this. So you get my zero on my indicator. And I've, I've set many gauges like this, and I've never had problems with, with this method of setting them. So that's the way you actually set the gauge. And then every time you, you bore your hole, you can, you can kind of verify that it's reading the size you want. Now, it's important not to handle the gauge blocks or the bore gauge. But if you do, try to hold it with the plastic handle here because the temperature of your hands can change things a little bit here. Although for plus or minus one thousandths, that's probably nothing you need to worry about, but if you were dealing in tens of thousands, you would want to take this into account. You'd want to be careful in handling the gauge blocks. Now, in this particular bore, this is the tool we're going to use. It's not in the machine yet. I've got to change tools and put it in there because I have an alternate tool in its place right now, and we're going to bore this hole in the, in the part, and I'll show you how I go about doing that. thing I'm going to do is back off this boring head a little bit. I'm going to back it off about eight thousandths of an inch or so, a little more than that. I'm going to I'm going to indicate I'm going to re-indicate this bore just to make sure that I'm in the right location. Because the machine is set for a while, and uh, the bore, I don't know if you can see that down here. The machine is set for a while, and, and I want to make sure I'm, I'm on the, the bore at the bottom underneath there as close as possible, just to be safe, because there's a concentricity issue between these two bores. also a snap ring groove. I can't really swing it all the way around, but I can get most of it. You have to check these things because you can have differences in temperature and everything. Okay, that's zero. Now I gotta teach the machine 
where that would be uh, the, the actual location of the bore because I want to hold a close concentricity. It was, it was only, it was only off less than a thousandth, but just in case, I want to make sure. We got to go about four and a half more thousandths to come out the size. I'm going to go three more, so it'll be up here somewhere. And since I'm screwing up this part now, this is the very one of the last tools. One, two, three, and the head, and we'll run it one more time. thousandth and a half to go. So I'm going to try to make this all in one adjustment, the last little bit. 